What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today we're taking a look at Star Control Origins because I've been sifting through the pile and this is what came up. My name is Splattercat, very very happy to have you in the world of indie games right now. Star Control Origins, I never actually played the precursors to this game, but I've heard that it's been very warmly received and people like them and they're classic games and they're the best thing ever and you grew up playing them and so on and so forth, so I figured now that Stardock has gone through and made kind of a recreation of those old games. We check it out for a good 30 minutes and kind of see what it has to offer and if it's the type of game that's right for you. So let's go ahead and dive straight on into a new game here. And we'll see what happens. I honestly don't know what to expect. As far as I understand, it's kind of like a, a Star Captain-esque flight through space, gather resources, explore, meet other alien races, and don't get blown up type game. We believe this is an alien transmission. And this is originating from where, exactly? It's local. Triton. Recall the captain. Tell him that he's needed. He's still on administrative leave from the incident. That no longer matters. He's the only one qualified to command the prototype Vindicator. They're giving me access to prototypes, man. I've always said this, my name is Alan Bradley. I don't think that my name is Alan Brand. Or Yeah, we're going to go with my normal... We're going to go with my normal name that I use for everything, except that it doesn't fit. No! Well, damn it. Um, my name can be Captain Brad Beasley. There we go. It's got to be alliterative. That's how you become remembered. you got to be Brad Beasley or like, I don't know. What's a name that starts with T? Like Trent Thompson. Like that sort of thing. It's got to be alliterative. It's got to have the same consonant twice. Otherwise, people just won't remember your name and you'll disappear into the annals of history. Uh, Captain Brad Beasley has been recalled to duty. Please report to the UES Vindicator. Nah, that's not going to be the name of our ship. It's going to be the, the the booty magnet, as per always. The UES booty magnet. And then mission difficulty, I suppose, will be normal. I had unread emails, though. I probably should have checked those. Like, if I'm high up the command chain, we got to check those emails. Otherwise, it's not going to work out. The last of the crew and supplies should be coming over to you shortly, Captain. Time to get started. Star Control is ordering you to travel to Triton and investigate the alien radio signal that's originating there. Okay. What do we know about the radio signal? It's just a series of regular pulses at 1.42 gigahertz. That's the hydrogen line, in case you've forgotten your radio astronomy. I didn't even... Very excitable men in glasses are pretty sure if aliens ever try contacting us, they'll do it on that frequency. They are substantially less certain why aliens might be on one of Neptune's moons, though. I don't think I remember my radio astrology at all. I didn't even know that that was a thing that you could study. I figured that'd be folded into some other, like, degree. And so, apparently, you can specialize in that in the future. I learned a new thing today. What should I do when I reach Triton, then? Scan its surface from orbit. If you find the signal, send one of your ship's landers down to the surface to examine it further. If it is an alien, you are ordered to not die and tell us right away. That seems kind of like a laissez-faire way to give a military order. Here's your orders, Private. Do not die and come and tell me. About not dying? Should I just tell you, be like, hey guys, I didn't die, I'm back. All right. Sure, you die as much as you want, Captain. Just send the ship back. All right. So does this supersede our mission to investigate the Lexites? Not entirely. Their departure is the whole reason we have a star control in the first place. Your mission to Triton takes priority, but if you do discover anything concerning the Lexites, you should tell us right away. What's a Lexite? Well, they're essentially human, so yes. But even during the chaos of their exodus, when they were stealing our launch craft, they went to great lengths to avoid harming anyone. Still, they obviously have access to technology we've never even contemplated. If you do run into them, be careful, Captain. Alright, well that's enough about that. Sure, Captain. 
Let's go. So let's any actual advice? Nah, that's fine. I'm a starship captain. Accelerated the construction of our new modular deep solar system vessel specifically for this mission. It's the fastest, most expensive ship humanity has ever made, Captain. Try not to lose it. It's also equipped with our latest resource collection landers, which I would encourage you to make heavy use of. We used up a lot of materials to make that thing. If we want to make any more Vindicator-class vessels, we're going to need you to collect the resources to do it. Looks like you've got everything stowed away now, Captain. You're all set. Good luck. And please, hurry. All right, so... There are a lot of people down on Earth anxious to find out what's going on. So is she like the Admiral? Like, where is she in the chain of command? Because obviously we're in, like, the Space Navy. The Spavy, as it were. And, like, is she, like, a handler? Is she, like, an ensign? Like, who is she? I need to know, like, I'm a captain. So I'm, like, up the chain a little bit. I'm right above, like, lieutenant or whatever, or right above, like, ensign. Like, I'm in a I'm in a sweet spot in the command chain. Not the sweetest spot. I mean, captains can still get killed in combat. So, you know, I'm not that high up the chain. Like, you ain't never heard of a colonel or, like, you know, a commander or, like, a general getting killed in combat. But, like, I can still get murdered in combat. But that being said, I'm in, like, a sweet spot where, like, people probably respect me. So, like, where is she in the command chain? I'm kind of confused here. Like, I feel like I'm receiving orders. Like, if she's the admiral, I just need to know whether or not I need to salute and, like, you know, iron my clothes before I come to meetings. Oh, my God. We in a spaceship now. So, I'm going this way. Ooh. Our ship feels kind of lumpy. I guess I'm going this way. All right. I'm going to let inertia take over until the camera decides it wants to zoom out. They said that it was Neptune we're going to. Ceres training base. I don't know if I should go there or not, or if I should just, like, beeline forward with my adventures. I've got 100 crew right there, and it looks like I've got 998 fuel. It's the 20th of September in 2088. That's optimistic. I don't think we'll get up into the solar system, like, by that point. There just seems to be no interest in it. Let's go to Triton. Captain, we've located the source of the radio signal. It looks like there's a crashed ship down there. We should take a lander down to investigate. All right, let's throw down one of the landers, I guess. Bye, lander. I'm falling through cubes right now. Oh, my. Can I shoot guns or anything like that? Like, do I have any, like, what is this right here? Does that do anything? Oh, my good sweet lord, baby Jeebus. It launched me up in the air. Okay, never mind. Maybe I should not touch things. So, resources remaining. There's nitrogen and there's a bunch of nitrous here. Just in case we run and get really, really, really paint can high. All right. So what is this? Can I go on water or does something bad happen if I go on water? What is that? Press tab to view your inventory and fleet status screen. Okay. So apparently I've picked up some nitrous oxide. Hell yeah, we having a party tonight. Mm-hmm. We get messed up, y'all. It's going to be a domed-ass trip back to Earth. I can tell you that much. You can call me Captain Crazy Party. So it looks like the things that I'm looking for are actually marked with little icons. I think maybe these blue ones might be, like, resources. Yeah, they are. All right. Well, we just picked up a bunch of nitrous oxide, so that's great. I think we finished that off. There's some resources on the opposite end of this thing, too. So I don't want to trigger the quest just yet if I can help it. I want to go over here and explore what this is. There we go. So now I got a little bit more nitrogen. Now we can check this out. You actually came. I can't tell you how sweaty we are to see you. Sweaty? I don't think... You know, I'm going to give you a pass because I'm sure that Xenolinguistics is not your specialty. Or maybe that's how they extend that they're happy to see each other in Slug World. I don't know. Maybe they say they're sweaty to see you when they're happy to see you. But anyways... Believe me, you can't be as excited as we are. I am Chief Viscosity Officer Wimdu of the Taiwan. Nice to meet you, Wimdu. I am a human of the Earthrock. You think it's nice to meet me? That's a wonderful change from the usual disgust and contempt we receive when meeting new species. So what are you doing on Triton, Wimdu? It's a funny story. You like it. It starts with these guys called the Scribe. 
They're the ones who shot us down. They're kind of our friends. So, if you're friends, why did they shoot at you? That makes so much sense when you say it that way. We're actually trying to protect you from the scribe. We began receiving your radio transmissions about 50 years ago. You're a fascinating species. And because we knew the scribe would destroy you if they found you, we've been keeping you a secret from them. At least we were, until a few months ago. The scribe had evidently received traces of your radio broadcasts themselves. They dropped some pretty terrifying hints that they were looking for you. We were on our way here to stall them, which we did, by getting shot down by them. Hence the distress call. Alright, so let's get back to Earth and warn them about the scribe. You probably should. The scribe are looking for you in this area of space. They don't know exactly where you are, but they will find you. Not a lot of humans are going to survive that process. The good news is, we can help you. If you help us first. Most of our systems were squished when we dropped out of hyperspace. Our hyperwave radio was one of them. Which is why we had to call for help the old-fashioned way. Also, half of our entire ship fell off. Now, we might actually be able to repair all that damage, but we will definitely need that other half of our spaceship back. Okay, where did the other half go? It went down on a planet somewhere in your solar system. I'm not sure where precisely. All planets look the same when you're crying. Though if I had to guess, I'd say it was around one of your larger, bluer worlds. Also, we lost a couple of hyperdrive modules. We'll definitely need those if we want to not starve to death far from home. Those definitely went down somewhere in your inner solar system. I know this is a lot to ask. But finding all of this shouldn't be a problem for a ship with both its halves. We're talking about searching entire planets here, man. For like a half a ship. You understand that like humanity, we don't have a good track record. Like we sink ships in our ocean, which is just like a fractional portion of our one planet, and we can't find them. I don't know if you picked the right species, my dude. You might have just let us get wiped out by the scribe. It was probably a smarter decision. Alright, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and take care of it. Great. We'll give you so many hugs if you manage to succeed. I don't think I want any slug hugs. I think I'm good without the slug hugs. Like, you could just, instead of the slug hugs, you could order me something from Grubhub. I would appreciate that. Thank you. Um, so how do I get up off the planet right now? Like, if I want to go... Like, let's say I want to bail out on this particular situation. Oh, I can strafe too. That's nice. Like, let's say that I don't want to be on this planet anymore. How do I get out of here? It's a valid question. Nobody ever said, like, how I could, like, GTFO the planet. Apparently, I just pressed the escape key. I went through every single key just pushing buttons, and escape key is what did it. Huzzah. We're out of here. Let's get back out into space. They said a larger, bluier planet. Well, you don't get much larger and bluier than Neptune, so... Maybe we'll find one of the things that we're supposed to have here. Oh, it's a gas giant, so I can't land there. Okay. They can zoom out a little bit more. Are the planets actively rotating the sun right now? Or do they just stay kind of in their own way? I guess we go over to Saturn. Maybe Jupiter and have a look around. I don't know. I'm not trying to go like inner solar right now. So there's Titan over here. Can I land on individual moons? Oh, you can. Wow. You can land on individual moons. Okay. Well, we've got... What's going on over here? we got a landing zone? Yeah, let's go land. Let's go see what's going on real fast. Let's see if we can find something good. Uh, we are way outside the squares right now. What?
Maybe I have to keep it inside the squares and just nobody ever said that. Hold on a second. I feel like that was a piece of information that probably should have been relayed to me, like with a text box or something like, Hey, you're supposed to keep your lander inside the square. Best of luck with that. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I guess we'll try it again. Oh, Brody. Oh, no. Oh, I landed it. Oh, my God. That was terrifying. Uh, there's metal oxides. There's strontium, barium, calcium compounds. It looks like there's all kinds of things over here. Yeah, let's go grab it. I say grab whatever we can up out of this trench. Let's keep it speeding, though. Oh, I almost got struck by lightning. Yeah, let's keep going. I want loot. I'm trying to get this stuff out. I don't know what it's going to be useful for, but I do want it. Who knew that the Moon of Titan would be so good for resources? So I'm assuming that the blue triangles are going to be like gas resources. Oh, metal oxides. Never mind. That throws that out. I was going to say, like, maybe the gray ones are like metal re... Are we full up right now? We have zero free space. Oof, that means I have to make that dangerous ass landing again if I want to go back down there. Oof. You'd think we wouldn't launch at such a weird angle if we were trying to stay alive. Let's maybe not do that right now. I picked up some metal oxides and stuff, but like, I don't want to wind up dead. Let's go to Saturn. There's no landable surface on Saturn. I should have figured that, but hey. Let's go ahead and bail on out. You guys want to see something crazy? That's the star map right there. Like, this is the entire world that you can explore in-game. And so, like, Earth and everything else is over here inside the Sol system. But, like, this is how many systems there are to explore in this game. Like, is that crazy or is that not crazy? Like, look at the sheer expanse of it. That's wild, right? No, don't go to, don't go to Titan. That was, I just, I drifted wrong, okay? No, space piloting is hard. I'm not going to make a good space captain. All right, let's zoom out. We're going to go to this little moon down here, Enchilada. The moon of Enchilada. And we're going to see if there's anything delicious that we want right there. Drift that thing on into orbit. Yeah, go for it, I guess. Oh, my God. Yo, landing this lander is hard. Like, it's kind of terrifying. How did my lander get destroyed? I don't understand. What did it get destroyed by? I guess I'll give it another try, although I don't know what I was blown up by, so... That's kind of the, the uncomfortable truth that we've got to learn to deal with right now. Is that I may have been slain by something that I don't fundamentally understand. Maybe we're not allowed to go into the big ice storms, possibly? I don't know. There's the Argon. Let's get the hell out of here. This place is hostile. Like, I don't I don't want... I just blew up randomly, and I had to load a save. And we're this early on into the game. I don't want to blow up randomly. I'm, I'm usually very, very selective about... I'm not... I'm not super picky about the things that happen to me, but blowing up is on the list of things that I tend to avoid. Is there anything on the Mun? There is? Let's go to the... There's a Lexite ruin? What the hell is Lexite? Alright, let's land on the moon and we'll see what's going on with Lexite over here. I don't know what a Lexite is, but I assume that it answers my questions about Amazon-related products in the future. So we got 27 silicone right there. A little bit more silicone. Like, if I'm looking for the Lexite thing, is that marked? I'm gonna do this jump right here. Oh, that was, a, that was some sweet air. That would definitely be like if you made me a space pilot, there's a pretty good chance that I'm just gonna use the lander to get sweet jumps. There's like a really, really good chance that I'm gonna spend your multi-billion dollar machinery just getting sick air. Captain, this is the lunar facility the Lexite settled after they first left Earth. We've sent surveyors here before, and I don't think much has changed since then. Not from all the dust I can see. It doesn't look like the Lexites were here long after they arrived in 2085. This was just a staging area they used before traveling elsewhere. No idea where they went after this, but you know that as well as I do. Finding them is why we have a star control in the first place. Captain, there's something powering on here. Blinking lights, humming sounds. There's a computer screen turning on. It says, threat to remnants detected. Lander self-defense technology ready to be used. Insert uranium to power. There's a slot in the device here. 
Do we have any uranium we can feed this thing? I don't... I don't keep that on me. We'll have to come back later then, or ignore this entirely. Your call, Captain. I feel like some defenses for our lander are a really, really good idea given the hostilities we've already seen in space. Pretty much everything seems to be in like a murderous splat-killing rage. And that sets me, as, as the resident splat, that sets me at ill ease, alright? So, like, maybe we just get up out of here. Should I go back to Earth and report what happened and be like, Hey, Duog, they trying to kill us? Captain, you survived! But tell me, Captain, what did you find out on Triton? Uh, there was a cool alien out there. What? Well, it sounds like you did the right thing offering to help, Captain. Our exobiologists have been studying the recordings of your conversation with the alien. Based on their word choice, blinking, and overall clamminess levels, we believe that this one was genuinely in fear for his life. So we've come to a conclusion. We want you to help them. This is too great an opportunity to pass up. Just remain cautious. There's no reason to trust these Taiwan fully just yet. See, that's why we all doubted Elon Musk when he invented the clammy scanner. But if we didn't have the clammy scanner right there, we probably would have been unable to read his body language and we probably would have thought he was hostile. So hail the clammy scanner. Well, if what this Taiwan says about the scribe is even remotely true, I think we need to help. The chance to establish friendly relations with an alien civilization is too great to pass up. Especially if they can in any way help us stop a threat to our civilization. Go find the missing parts of their ship, Captain. They should be around here somewhere. Alright, well, let's go get back to work then. Oh? Like what? I need a new lander. You did? Those aren't cheap, Captain. Neither are the poor guys who drive them. Unfortunately, things are a little tight around here. We've used up almost every resource we had making that ship of yours. Even making payroll has been challenging. I have not been too popular around here lately. Return here with any resources you find on your travels. We'll use advanced space accounting practices to determine what we can build with them. This will all be presented to you as resource units, or RU. Which you can then exchange for fuel or other supplies. I'm just going to call them space rubles from now on. I'm pretty sure they're space rubles. Uh, yeah, I guess sell my cargoes? I don't know. None of these seem to be worth very much, but hell. The Argon's worth a decent amount. All right. I got resource units, son. I got 59 barium. That's worth a decent amount, too. All right. We get paid. So, like, let's say I want a new lander because I blowed mine up. Like, I didn't mean to. It was an accident. Like, I wasn't trying to, it's just that I got kind of like sideways in a blizzard, and bad things happened. What? We have all these upgrade slots for our ship? Do I have weapons? I have a basic nuke? Wait, I'm firing nuclear missiles at the enemy? Good lord. What else can I put right here? Advanced nukes? Point defense? Point defense would be nice. What can I put right there? Specialized equipment? AI fleet coordinator? Uh, trajectory correction computer. What does that do right there? I can add like a new fuel tank or something. We've got a hawking thruster. An EM drive. What kind of modules can I have? Crew quarters? Oh, okay. And then for lander, I can have anti-gravity thrusters. And so our landers can be airborne for short durations. Okay. I assume they're going to invent, like, more technology as time goes along, and we just don't have access to everything on the grid just yet. But that's pretty cool. I can also have a fleet. Like, I can have loads of ships. Uh! Can I Can I get one right now? Oh, weak. I can't recruit anybody to my fleet right now. Is there anything else? I wanted to be a rider. I wanted to have squad. Good luck, Captain. At least I know now that the landers are only 500 bucks. They tried to tell me they were more than that. 500 rubles? That's basically nothing. Like, don't even worry about that. It's basically nothing. We can essentially lose those with impunity if they only cost 500 rubles. And I believe that they do because that's what the game told me. Let's land on Venus. Is there anything on Venus? We'll need to find some way to improve our lander technology to have a hope of safely exploring the surface here. Oh. 
Okay, well, I just, I wanted to go to Venus, but I guess you won't let me. Fine, then. I don't want to go to Venus that badly anyways. How about Mercury? I'm just going to pronounce things wrong this entire video on purpose. Captain, this planet is oh, God. I'm just going to pronounce things wrong this entire episode just to drive all the space people crazy. Like, it's not Jupiter. It's Jupiter. And that's not the sun. That's the soon. <laughs> when is it going to burn us up? Soon, TM. Can I go to Mars then, maybe? Like, can I at least go to the friendly rent planet? Like, it's... Sir, we're detecting two unidentified objects on the surface of Mars. Is this something to do... It's probably something else entirely. Oh, my good sweet lord, baby Jeebus. Oh, I made it. I made it. We're all right. Everything's going to be okay. We're not going to die horribly. What is this? An unidentified this object. Like part of an alien spaceship, Captain. I bet this is one of the hyperdrive modules those aliens are missing. We'll load it up onto the lander now. All right. Sounds good. Do what you got to do, man. That's how I talk on the phone right there. I'll be like, all right, sounds good. Like, that's pretty much like my main go-to on the phone phrase. All right, sounds good. I don't want to talk about this. All right, sounds good. We got a lot of nitrous, man, so if we're out here to huff, I think we can make it happen. I'm going to keep gathering resources because I'm poor, and I like the idea of not being poor anymore. Hey, we found another piece of the alien ship. There it is. This looks like part of an alien spaceship, Captain. I bet this is one of the hyperdrive modules those aliens are missing. We'll load it up onto the lander now. Hold on, I'm drifting the lander. Yeah! Get sideways. Oh, that almost seemed like it ended badly. See, this is why they don't trust me with advanced, expensive government equipment. Because I just use it to do donuts on other planets. I'd be like, the first donut on Mars. Your boy got sideways in the twisties. Get at me. My name is Splattercat. This is Star Control Origins. Uh, I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile every single day in indie gaming so that you can decide what's on the docket. This game is $40. It's kind of expensive. That would be the main thing I think that's going to turn some people off, but so far I've liked the experience. We haven't got that far in. We haven't done any combat or anything like that, but I've enjoyed exploring and riding around on the lander. So anyways, I'll see y'all later. Thanks for stopping by. Hi, dude. Take care, and if you like this video, don't forget to leave a like on it. Helps out more than you know. Farewell, everybody.